Are there any other specific differences in sort of male and female training that mm -hmm. we could shed light on? Yeah, so I think, you know, outside like the specificity of like putting together an actual program and targeting certain muscles, muscle groups rather, um, people may have actually heard um, somewhere along their fitness journey that women tend to do better with higher rep ranges and males do better with uh, lower rep ranges. And traditionally, I think there's a, there's a reason why we tend to see that that style of programming, um, you know, more prominent, you know, in the gym scene. And part of that is due to, uh, I guess, some of the differences in sex hormones um, and that kind of has an impact on our muscle fiber type. So females actually have a greater percentage of type one muscle fibers than do males. Um, and the positive consequence of that um, difference there for females is that it means that we're better able to transport nutrients uh, into the tissues and also clear um, different metabolites, um, you know, during activity. So the benefit there is that women tend to be less fatigable um, when it comes to training. And uh, another thing that kind of coincides really nicely with that is that women, um, again, in either both the fed and the fasted state, tend to do better at utilizing um, fatty acids. So again, it means that we're less reliant upon some of those glycolytic, um, you know, pathways or anaerobic processes. So um, we do better um, in as, uh, when it comes to recovery from um, different types of training. So when it comes to building out that training program, again, I'm being pretty meticulous here, but men, I would often opt for a little bit more strength specific training. Um, and I guess if you look at the definitions of strength training, it's the rep ranges between one to six. Um, then you've got your moderate rep ranges, or we call that the hypertrophy rep range. Um, I'll have more of that with females and then the which is about eight to twelve eight to twelve eight to fifteen and then we've got our endurance strength training which is you know your 15 to 20 reps so some like women will um, say that they uh, enjoy that type of training and they're able to tolerate it better um, more so than some of the strength based training but I would I would still argue that females when you're you know put in the right hands with a good qualified coach um, that they could equally enjoy that style of training too but again that's thinking about like the actual differences, you know, that muscle fiber type and part of that's due to, I believe it's estrogen, um, you know, women having a higher level of estrogen. We've got more estrogen receptors, I believe, on our, our skeletal tissues. And that's one of the benefits um, for, you know, the nutrient transport. So. Now, that's interesting. Wouldn't that also suggest that women would have an easier time training without ingestion of glucose, mm -hmm. right? Um, at least in theory, and yet mm -hmm. I feel like maybe it's just looking at my wife. She <laughs> does not like to train on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. She she needs something to, you know, she needs to be drinking or eating something beforehand. Yeah, I think. But I think you mentioned you like to train on an empty stomach. I'm the opposite. So I, again, I think it's really subjective. Um, we can, the science can always say certain things, but. We've also then got to take into the into account, I think, the individual's, you know, perception and often it's, you know, it is very subjective. So for me as somebody that has struggled with like irritable bowel syndrome for, you know, the last 10 years of life, I can't think of anything worse than trying to train with anything in my stomach. I might have a couple of coffees in the morning, um, but I'm keeping, you know, pretty low gut irritant type foods because the minute I feel some kind of, you know, distension or, you know, pain in my stomach, I cannot train. I would rather train hungry with a rumbling stomach than try to have to execute with a full stomach. <laughs> so, but again, endurance training, very different to, you know, more anaerobic training. Yeah. Like the resistance training that I do is probably more, um, you know, anaerobic. So it might be just due to the differences in, um, you know, exercise type. Any other differences that we should be aware of as far as female and male? Uh, either through response to nutri response to nutrient or load. Um, I think again, if we sp speaking to sex hormones, I think the menstrual cycle is probably the only other thing that kind of springs to mind. And um, there's been a lot more um, information becoming available on um, that topic as it relates to um, hypertrophy outcomes and strength training. And again, there's probably four studies um, that are you know high quality at the moment that I can think of that. 
um, again, tend to be kind of on the fence. Um, half of them show that, um, you know, during the second phase, the luteal phase of your menstrual cycle, um, when progesterone is high and uh, uh, estrogen is low, that subjectively uh, strength decreases for mm. females during training. Um, and then during the earlier parts of training when progesterone is low, um, you know, people report to feel uh, a lot better with their training, the performance is better, the strength is improved. But again, it's like it's a 50-50 for clients. Whoa. So when it comes to female programming, I as a default, and if it's if it doesn't seem to impact them, that's great, but I will default to setting deloads um, on or around their menstrual cycle. So you might go two weeks on, two weeks. Like you could upload two weeks, download two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it might be in the middle of a mesocycle. But again, it, it depends on how serious they are about their progression. But- my I'm guessing default. that's something a lot of male trainers don't think about. <laughs> no, probably not at all. Yeah. Absolutely. And like just ability to be adherent and like your uh, energy mood, sleep, you know, all of those things can be impacted around your cycle. Um, constipation like, is another prevalent symptom of, um, you know, men menses. So, you know, that that absolutely impacts people's energy levels and like motivation to train. Mm -hmm.